Welcome to the Talk of the Town with KSUB on Backcountry TV. For nearly 80 years, KSUB is Southern Utah's source for news, information, sports, and entertainment. Talk Radio 590 KSUB is a Cherry Creek radio station. From 10 to 1 on Talk Radio 590 KSUB. Good morning, it's 8.23. This is the uh, Big Picture Morning Show for your Friday. Good morning to you. Uh, some days ago, I made the invitation to New Cedar City Chief of Police Darren Adams to join us. And Darren, I uh, really had the, the uh, intent of uh, having this kind of be just an opportunity to get better acquainted with you to talk about your upbringing, uh, talk about uh, your uh, career in law enforcement, and your feelings about uh, heading the department here in Cedar City. Of course, intervening events, especially those in uh, Dallas last night, have left kind of a cloud and a pail over uh, all of us this morning as it relates to law enforcement. And so I want to take the opportunity, first of all, to thank you and your men and women for your service here in southern Utah and in Cedar City. Thank you, Chris, and, and Tim, we appreciate that, and I appreciate the invitation and opportunity. Do you mind if we start with the elephant in the room, if, the, if, the, if that's no, okay? Of course. Uh, what, one thing that I've wanted to ask you is, uh, and, and I, I don't want this to sound at all, I just don't want this to be misunderstood, but the there's a difference between a Dallas and I hope a Cedar City. I hope there's a difference anyway. And I know that your officers do go out, and there is a sense of I'm, I'm trying to find the right word. How, I mean, how often have you as an officer, because you've been in the force 20 years, how often have you felt a legitimate actual fear for, for the things that you're involved with? I'm sure, I'm sure you've had those experiences even in our little town. Sure. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably not to the extent that you might find in a larger metropolis, mm -hmm. but, uh, but it does happen. You know, we, uh, we've had several incidents with it that have caused us to you know, uh, draw our service weapon on, on threats or potential threats. Um, of course, I was the supervisor on duty um, nearly 10 years ago when, when one of our officers was shot in the line of duty, and, and that, of course, was, was very traumatic for many of us. So, I mean, if you contrast that to, you know, a, a larger city, and, and by its very nature, there are more people, there are more potential for, for incidents like that. It, it's not as much, but it does exist. We have people that have dwelled in those major cities and, and have engaged in criminal activity, pass through and relocate to, to even our small neck of the woods. How can we in, in Cedar, and if we need to, we'll, we'll ask the question, let like you get started and then come back to it if we need to. Um, I've been impressed with the department uh, reaching out to be involved with the community and, and, and try to make sure the relations were good. How can we continue to build that trust and relationship between the department and the pe people you're protecting and serving, how can we continue to build that trust so maybe a situation like Dallas just doesn't happen right. here? You know, we've thought about that and, and, you know, we ask ourselves, is there one magic bullet that would solve that? And of course there's not. Um, from what I understand and what I've learned. It isn't any one thing, is it? Right, right. It's, it's a comprehensive, it's a collaborative approach. Um, and you often hear about uh, people saying, you know, you've got to make those those deposits over time into, into that bank account. So when a major withdrawal comes, like an officer involved shooting or something, uh, wherein the public may um, have some, some doubt or may scrutinize your actions, that you have that, that community support. And so there's a variety of things that we can do. Um, a couple of our officers just recently over the last couple of years have, of course, uh, created the Lunch with the Cop program, yes. at which we fully support. So things like that. Um, just this uh, past couple of months, I worked with Southern Utah University, and we completed a community survey that they did under the uh, Department of Political Justice and, or excuse me, Political Science and Criminal Justice. So we were able to, to reach out to community members, something we want to do um, annually or biannually, to let them know that we care about their feedback, their concerns, their opinions. 
And so there's other things, uh, you know, as we take that information in that we can refine our efforts and try to really listen to our, to our community and find ways that we can solve issues and problems and work, you know, in a partnership to increase public safety. I was reading a story this morning in the news, let me uh, try and find it real quick, uh, that up in, um, up in Trovo, they've got some recent changes in their officer training there that's intended to de-escalate uh, tense situations. Right. Do your officers go through tra training like that also? They do. Um, CIT or Crisis Intervention Team Training is a concept that was started many years ago and we began to embrace that about uh, seven years ago. Every year we hold a CIT Academy for officers uh, you know, within the Southern Utah area and the regional coordinator for that. And we've got just about every officer, of course, with turnover. We've got new officers coming on but we're just about to where we have every single officer through that, that training. And it's designed specifically to deal with our mental health consumers and those with mental disabilities so we can de-escalate and divert them to more appropriate resources. Mm -hmm. We will uh, break soon for a quick news break and come back with more of our conversation. We certainly want to get uh, uh, better acquainted uh, with you. Uh, of course, uh, born and raised right here in Cedar City. So there are a lot of folks who know uh, Darren Adams. Perhaps sure. you're a little nervous about what some folks know about <laughs> Darren Adams. That's right. <laughs> All right. Let's, 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 okay, we'll give you 30 seconds. So what was the, when you were a kid, what was, the big, what was your big trouble? What, what, what was your biggest trouble point, Darren? Come uh, on, don't uh, tell me you got through, you were the little angel. No, I mean, we, you know, we had times where we would, you yeah, I mean, your kids, right? Right, I, exactly. I, I think probably the one that sticks out most in my mind, I grew up over on 75 East, and uh, like kids, me and a good friend of mine went to the field next door and, and began to experiment with, with fire, and before we knew it, the field had caught <laughs> and it started to spread, and fire department responded luckily uh you know nothing was threatened but uh, it mm -hmm. was extremely uh troubling and, and scary and and of course back then and, and it still applies today but you didn't care or you weren't so much worried about the police responding it was what dad was going to do okay. <laughs> yeah and that's the truth and uh, the police were your the least of your worries that's that right yes. in fact you could probably told you dad can't you just put me in jail tonight that'd be all right all right we'll be back on the big picture morning show partly cloudy skies and warming up a Rediscover summertime family fun in Brian Head. Escape the heat and come to the cool, crisp southern Utah mountains. Come to escape. Come to explore. Come for excitement. Come to Brian Head. It's not far from St. George or Cedar City or anywhere else in southern Utah, but you'll be away from it all. Stay the night and take in the grandeur of a star party. Explore rustic hiking trails, the pristine mountain meadows blanketed in wildflowers, the stunning vistas of Cedar Breaks National Monument. Enjoy fishing, paddle boarding, and barbecuing all around Bristlecone Pond. And if you're looking for excitement, ride one of the world-class mountain biking trails or take an ATV excursion to High Mountain. Summer tubing, the zip line, paintball, archery, and other thrilling adventures can all be found in Brian Head. Come to escape, come to explore. Come for excitement, come to Brian Head. To plan your summer trip, go online to visitbrianhead.org. There's a stampede coming. The Cedar City Lions Club 15th Annual Great American Stampede Rodeo is Friday and Saturday, September 9th and 10th with two nights of National Intercollegiate Rodeo hosted by SUU and collegiate rodeo teams from around the West featuring the Diamond Z Shire Hitch and presented by Coca-Cola, Cherry Creek Radio, Backcountry TV, Cedar City Brian Head Tourism Bureau and many others at the Cross Hollow Event Center in Cedar City. Rodeo starts at 7, September 9th and 10th. Tickets available at the gate. Country TV, Channel 8.2. Information you need. Conversation to make you think. You're with Talk Radio 590. 
KSUB. Good morning, it's 842. This is the Big Picture Morning Show. Is that country enough for you, Darren? That's perfect. <laughs> okay. okay, now we are going to get you to re-sing the song that you sang at Chief Ellenson's. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, I don't have it in front of me. It would be a stretch to remember. <laughs> <laughs> Darren Adams is with us. Darren was uh, officially installed as Cedar City's new Chief of Police on Wednesday evening, was it not, uh, Darren, yeah. at the council meetings? That's correct. Uh, Good to have you with us uh, this morning. Uh, I, I want to ask you uh, about your, your your initial feelings uh, when you were named uh, the new chief of police. You have been uh, lieutenant with the department. You've been uh, with the department. Uh, has it been uh, with Cedar City uh, exclusively for 20 years now? Yeah, 19 years, uh, July 1, I did some uh, reserve work for the sheriff's office prior to that as I went through and put myself through the police academy. But okay. yeah, the better part was Cedar. Mm -hmm. Initial feelings? Uh, when you were named the new po uh, chief of police? Yeah, you know, I, I describe it as kind of a nervous excitement. I'm extremely excited and, and quite humbled to be able to uh, work shoulder to shoulder with just a remarkable group mm -hmm. of men and women who provide such a great service to our community. Um, but uh, being close to Chief Allenson before working hand in hand with him, uh, there was always a little bit of a buffer between, yeah. uh, you know, the final decision. And now that, that rests with me, and so it, it's a lot to take in and, and a uh, responsibility that I take very seriously. And so yeah. heightened level of awareness, concern, and, and, and especially, as you mentioned earlier in the program, in light of the recent uh, assault on officers, um, it's concerning because I do care yeah. and worry you know, daily about the guys and, and, and the gals, and, and we just want to make sure that we keep them safe and, and be able to provide this level of service to our residents. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and I'm going to speak just for myself here, so this you know, the, the opinion about you, uh, but I was telling this to Chris earlier. I love being in town here because whenever I see one of your officers, I don't get afraid. Um, I will tell you that there are certain other towns well, say 55 miles south of here, where if, if you know, an officer pulls up behind me, I just clinch up. I don't do that here. Uh, you, your officers and, and the dealings I've had with them here at the radio station, and yes, when I may have been going a mile or two over the speed limit, uh, it's been, it's, they've been good encounters. And uh, I appreciate that. So uh, I guess the thing I, I would say is how can, because I just, I don't, I, I feel safe. When I see a police officer, I don't feel afraid at all. I don't feel like they're necessarily trying to find out what I'm doing wrong. I mean, if you dig long, uh, dig enough, you'll find something. Sure. No, we appreciate that, Tim. Uh, you know, we try to create a culture, and, and that's something that I will continue to work on and focus and build, is that we can have those interactions, those positive interactions with our community. And, and every time we, we do that and have that opportunity, then when something happens where perhaps you have gone a little bit fast and there has to be a bit of a, like that happens. a, a, bit of a consequence that <laughs> hopefully can also still be positive. Um, and, you know, it's, a lot of it is just getting to know people. You know, if, if you're in another town and you don't know them naturally, it's our natural instinct, unfortunately, to, to clench up, as you put it, when we see the red and blues behind us. But as you get to know officers and understand um, you know, who they are, what their intent is, and create foundational relationships, that kind of fades away. You know, I, 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 I want to tell one experience, and, and again, this was one of those things I thought was okay. Uh, my wife woke me up in the middle of the night just in some intense pain. Uh, she was having a kidney stone. We live not far from the hospital, and so we jumped in the car. I, it was winter, so I scraped up just enough to see out the window, <laughs> and I was ripping down Northfield, and on the came the blue and the whites, and the guy came up and said, look, I'm going right there to the hospital. Please follow me. Give me a ticket if you need to. And, but I need to get her there. She's in pain. And, we, and I just left. Yeah. And he followed to the hospital and didn't even follow us in. And I thought, that's very cool of you. Because my only concern there was getting my wife sure. treatment. Absolutely. And I thought that was a great thing. He w would have had it. He would have been well within his right to write me up. And right. I would have accepted it. <laughs> but he didn't. And I thought that was very cool. Yeah, no, you know, we, we try. Our, our whole mission is, is to make sure that we can create positive relationships and ensure public safety. There's a variety of ways to do that. But, you know, our guys have so much to do, and when they wake up in the morning until they go home, you know, those radars are up constantly. There's really no downtime. It's, there's, there's no time during that eight or ten hours where they can kind of just sit back and relax, other than the fact when perhaps they're in the station and writing reports where we have a bit of a sanctuary. But once they leave, with the increase in, in assaults and ambushes and snipers, it's, it's, it's tense. And so when, when an officer goes home at the end of the day, 
um, there's exhaustion, there's uh, sometimes turmoil, yeah. uh, sometimes conflict with a spouse or kids because of what they've felt like that day, what they've gone through, what they've experienced. Um, sometimes the worst that humanity can can throw at us. So uh, we certainly don't want to take on any more than, than we have to and, and cause any any uh, undue hardship on our residents just because, you know, they're dealing with so much. We want to have those positive relationships. Rediscover summertime family fun in Brian Head. Escape the heat and come to the cool, crisp southern Utah mountains. Come to escape. Come to explore. Come for excitement. Come to Brian Head. It's not far from St. George or Cedar City or anywhere else in southern Utah, but you'll be away from it all. Stay the night and take in the grandeur of a star party. Explore rustic hiking trails, the pristine mountain meadows blanketed in wildflowers, the stunning vistas of Cedar Breaks National Monument. Enjoy fishing, paddleboarding, and barbecuing all around Bristlecone Pond. And if you're looking for excitement, ride one of the world-class mountain biking trails or take an ATV excursion to High Mountain. Summer tubing, the zip line, paintball, archery, and other thrilling adventures can all be found in Brian Head. Come to escape, come to explore. Come for excitement, come to Brian Head. To plan your summer trip, go online to visitbrianhead.org. Attention travelers, welcome to our beautiful area. While here, visit Cedar City. Enjoy music festivals, powwows, car shows, running and bike trails, fishing and water sports, rodeos, farmers markets, and even the Neil Simon Festival and Tony Award winning Utah Shakespeare Festival. And so much more. Find out what's happening at visitcedarcity.com. Bring your family, come and play in the Festival City, USA. Tough TV is the first digital broadcast network to offer first-run original programming targeted at men. Tough TV features content that men are passionate about. Sports, lifestyle, drama, reality, talk, specials, and movies. Don't even try it. You'll be dead before you touch pocket <laughs> Sports, lifestyle, drama, reality, talk, specials, and movies. Visit us online at toughtv.com. Are you tough enough? Body cameras, uh, are, are we using them here yeah. in Cedar City? And yeah. how, how has the response been from your officers? It's been, it's been great. Um, we worked on those uh, about a year ago, trying to draft policy. Of course, as you know, HB 300 came out this last legislative session, and, and it, uh, it mandates, if you do have them, guidelines to follow. We've infused those and incorporated those into our policy, and, and Sergeant Roden, our public information officer, has done a tremendous job um, helping to get those up and going, getting those ordered, getting them out, training the guys, ensuring that, that we work through you know, some of the some of the issues you have when you implement new technology, but uh, one of my officers just the other day said I was a, a bit hesitant, but man, I'm, I'm grateful for those. They're, they're really helpful. You know, we can state with confidence with what we do that technology never is a failure. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, we're reading the story earlier, and you may have heard it, that uh, uh, Janetta Williams of the NAACP uh, here in uh, Utah is encouraging people to record uh, encounters with police on their cell phones. Uh, one of the uh, points that was made in the article is that police groups asked about recording video of traffic stops and other encounters say they have no problem with it as long as it doesn't interfere with an arrest or an investigation. Is that how you feel about things, Darren? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, a person's right if they want to record. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, we do that now. We're recording for several different purposes, one being accuracy. Um, you know, and, and there's something to be said about uh, keeping us accountable. And when we're recording ourselves, obviously we hope that will increase our professionalism in the way that we interact with the public. Mm -hmm. and, and so if they're recording, yeah, I, we have no problem with that, uh, again, as long as that doesn't interfere or, or, you know, cause an officer safety issue. Your predecessor, Chief Allenson, uh, born and raised in Eureka, I think is how they say it up there, if I remember correctly. Uh, you were born and raised here. I, I don't know that that necessarily gives you any kind of advantage, but it, it is fair to say and accurate to say that it's important for you to have a passion and a love for community, is it not? Absolutely. Um, you know, that's one thing that, that I often talk to the officers about and will continue to do so over the next year as we start to really focus in on, on our community. Uh, we often say that, that, you know, being a police officer is a job, and, and it is, but my feeling is, is that it's much more than that. Uh, when we live in a community, uh, we should take 
some, some efforts and have an investment in how we police and how we ensure that our families that live here, our extended family and friends are, are safe. And so having lived here most of my life with the exception of a few years in New Mexico, I want to make sure that this is a safe place for my family and future generations and people that I know and have grown up with, both young and old, uh, to make sure that we can live together and, and, and really enjoy what Cedar City has to offer because, as you know, it's a remarkable place. You had an event in Cedar City Main Street Park a couple of months back to kind of provide the opportunity with uh, 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 an interaction with law enforcement that didn't involve red and blue lights. Right. Uh, how did that go? Did it achieve what you hoped uh, that it might achieve? And will you continue to do that yes. in the future? And what other ways do you want to reach out to the communities? Sure. No, that was great. Uh, Officer uh, Isaac Askaroth and, mm -hmm. and uh, with the help of Corporal Justin Ludlow came up with that idea a couple mm -hmm. of years ago. And they were we both in this uh, yes. studio to talk about it. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it did. You know, we want to see that grow. We want to see an increase in community involvement to allow a forum wherein our residents can come out and just talk and ask questions and have a, a non-threatening environment, not to feel that pinched him, as you put it, you know, when they, when they see officers, uh, but just to have a dialogue and create that so that that can sustain throughout the months and the years to come. Once you get to know that officer on a little bit more intimate level, it's easier when you see him on the street to go up and say, how are you? And, and you know, even uh, talk to them about concerns you may have in your neighborhood. Hey, you know, I, I wasn't going to say anything, but I know you now, and, and I feel like I can say this freely, but we're concerned mm -hmm. about this or that. And so it's important that we establish those foundational relationships. When someone calls your office and has concerns about officer conduct, how, how is that treated? Sure. So we, uh, we have a, uh, an Office of Professional Standards, which is the office that uh, I just vacated. Um, and so once I uh, promote uh, a new lieutenant, which will be coming up very soon, that, that is their job. Now, of course, our supervisors will take those initial complaints, and if, if they're minor enough that they can be addressed at that level, then, then we encourage that. If it's more serious or severe, it takes more of an investigation. That goes to uh, the operations lieutenant, and it goes through an entire internal affairs investigation. I assume that there are some policies in place that should disciplining of an officer ever need to happen, that th th those, those uh, systems are there. Correct, yes. Uh, what about Rediscover summertime family fun in Brian Head. Escape the heat and come to the cool, crisp southern Utah mountains. Come to escape. Come to explore. Come for excitement. Come to Brian Head. It's not far from St. George or Cedar City or anywhere else in southern Utah, but you'll be away from it all. Stay the night and take in the grandeur of a star party. Explore rustic hiking trails, the pristine mountain meadows blanketed in wildflowers, the stunning vistas of Cedar Breaks National Monument. Enjoy fishing, paddle boarding, and barbecuing all around Bristlecone Pond. And if you're looking for excitement, ride one of the world-class mountain biking trails or take an ATV excursion to High Mountain. Summer tubing, the zip line, paintball, archery, and other thrilling adventures can all be found in Brian Head. Come to escape, come to explore. Come for excitement, come to Brian Head. To plan your summer trip, go online to visitbrianhead.org. Attention travelers and welcome to the beautiful area. Maybe you're experiencing the Mighty Five National Parks and while you're traveling, you'll want to get off at I-15 exit 75 in Parowan. The story of the area started in Parowan, where traditions are rooted, maintained, and celebrated. Parowan is a quaint little town with historic homes, great hometown eateries and stores, home of the Iron County Fair, Half Marathon, and near the Parowan Gap. Sponsored by Cedar City Brian Head Tourism Bureau. Visit online at visitcedarcity.com. Country TV, channel 8.2. I, I want to get, I wish, I wish we could keep it for another hour. Um, what about, okay, let's say we have a traffic stop going on, and uh, the person that's been stopped informs the officer, I'm a concealed weapon permit carrier, and I do have a firearm army. Question, yeah. What 
should they expect from the police officers and what would you expect from the person at sure. that point? You know, and we have that happen quite often um, and we appreciate that. We appreciate that, that revelation. First of um, all, is it necessary to make that statement to uh, advise law it's enforcement? Not, it's, not, it's not mandated by law. It's a courtesy and, and so we encourage people, you know, that, that we like to know that. It just tends to make things a lot easier, especially if, uh, you know, probable cause starts to build and we, we start, you know, looking deeper and may have to get into the car and find that. It's a surprise. So we like to know that and, and people have been generally good at letting us know that. So we would just ask, you know, as a courtesy, if you have that, to just make that declaration to us. Uh, and at that point, you know, we'll go through and do our, our normal business. Some officers may just say, hey, you know, can you tell me where it is? And if you wouldn't mind, just, you know, keep your hands where I can see them. Just for our peace of mind mm -hmm. and people in our past experience have been very good to be compliant to that. So, uh, if, if I'm misunderstanding, you're generally not asking the, those weapons carriers to yield their weapons. That's generally not done, or is it? You know, it depends. It's probably based on officer discretion. You know, if they say, hey, would you mind, you know, bringing that out so I can look at it, or just, you know, leave it where it's at. If they if they declare, well, I have it under the seat, or it's, it's you know, on my person, well, you know, officer can make that determination based on the totality of that circumstance and, and how he may feel at that time. Yeah. Uh, in terms of your uh, your crew, the, the people uh, that work under you, um, we have generally had a great opportunity to be able to get acquainted with them, to have them on this very program even, and I'm pleased to know and, and pleased to say that I, I know many of your officers uh, by name and, and by face and, and I'm able to interact with them in, in you know, school activities with children, you know, going sure. to the same school and so forth. Uh, it, it seems important to me, Darren, to be able to continue to have those types of opportunities and, and to have you uh, and your officers on the radio with us. Absolutely, and I would, I would certainly encourage that. I think it's important to, to have that exposure, to have our community get to know these men and women a little bit more intimately. Maybe we're going to have quarterly donut day here. <laughs> 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 Who doesn't like a donut? <laughs> no one isn't that I know, anyway. Uh, Dan, uh, just... Uh, what do you hope people will be saying about Chief Dan Adams at his retirement party, which we hope is many, many years down the road? Yeah. Well, you know, I, I really want to put um, the people that, that I work with uh, first and foremost. Um, you know, last year we created a peer support program. Um, I brought down a, a psychologist to start conducting status assessments with my officers. And so my, my goal really is to make sure my officers are well trained, well supported, and well cared for so that they can, you know, effectively protect your families while at the same time returning home to theirs. And so if we can do that and, and make sure that they are, are well equipped and, and well prepared to enhance our public safety and to not ever be in a situation where their life's threatened. I, I mean, that's you know comes with the job, but we want to make sure that, that they're protected and that they can do their job effectively and, and return home. Okay, and by the way, just as a heads up to anyone that might be planning a retirement party, sing him a rap song. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that would work. That'll be payback, right? Yeah. Chief Adams, thank you so very much for being with us today. And please uh, feel free sure. if you need to get information out to the public. Uh, that's kind of what we're here for okay. too. Thanks, Dave. Right, thanks, Chris. We'll be right back. The Big Picture continues right after this on Talk Radio 590 KSUB. Thanks for watching the Talk of the Town with KSUB on Backcountry TV. Talk Radio 590 KSUB, Southern Utah's voice for nearly 80 years for news, information, sports, and entertainment. Talk Radio 590 KSUB is a Cherry Creek radio station.